Welcome to the Eclectic Thrift and Crafter, where we thrift and craft with purpose. Hello, I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Today we are going to head out to the yard and we're going to take a look at this year's batch of bees. But before we head out to the apiary, I have a little bit of repairing I need to do. What I'm opening here are the 9 inch brood frame wax foundations. The last two winters in the Pacific Northwest have been bitterly cold and a couple of the universities around here that do have orchards for studying um, different seeds and, and how to grow different types of apples, they lost their bees as well due to the bitterness of the winters. When I did the hive clean out, some of the frames were not viable any longer. In the meantime, I had to order new foundations for one of the hives, but the foundation didn't come in time when the bees arrived. So they had to wait, and in the meantime, it rained and rained and rained, and the wind blew, and I couldn't get into the beehive to either take out the little queen box that the queen arrives in, nor add the brood frames. So that's what we're going to do today. There is a difference in the foundation for the brood and the foundation for the honey. The little cells for the brood are just a little bit bigger than the cells that they make for the honey. This is natural beeswax from bees I've had in the past. I'm going to use it to affix the foundation to the wooden frame. Once the bees start building brood in there, the whole thing will be filled with wax and it will be solidly attached into the frame but this is just enough to get that started. I have learned that having a heat gun as part of your toolbox comes in very handy. Now we begin the process. So first I'm going to fill the smoker and what I do is to keep the smoke cool, I layer um, pine straw with uh, raw cardboard and pine cones. And this keeps the heat cool so that the bees are not damaged. It works very, very well. Right behind me there is the fountain. When you have bees, it's always very good to have a water source nearby because they need water. Another thing that I do is I hang a block of salt lick on the fence because they also need salt to produce their honey. There it is to the right there. We're going to do the one on the left first and take the queen box out. And that's the little thing that you see hanging in the middle there. It's been in there for quite a while as you can see because it was raining and windy and I could not do it. She comes in this little queen box and what you have to do is pop uh, the cork out and put a marshmallow in there 
and while the other bees um, munch on the marshmallow to set her free, this time that it takes for the bees to get the queen out of the little box uh, gives them a chance to get acclimatized to the hive. And so that's all ready to go. They have an extra box that it's a brood box, but it's also honey for them. And this box is honey for me. We have to make a little adjustment on that one. The nail came loose. And it'll be good to go. Once they build the honey cells in there, it's going to be fixed pretty fast. Now that box should last through the rest of the month of June as well as July. The box, box below is filled with honey already. And they're making space for brood in there as well. The queen will have access to both honey and the brood. Not everybody follows this system, but I have decided this year that I'm going to follow the box stacking system of Charlotte Anderson. Charlotte Anderson is a master beekeeper from the Carolinas. Her system of stacking the boxes is brood chamber, honey for them, queen excluder, honey for her. So I'm doing the very same thing. On the left hand side, I had an extra brood chamber. So I'm using that as the honey for them. I filled it with brood frames and left that so that they could use that extra brood box because I'm, I only have two hives, not three. So it was a way of making use of the extra brood frame as well. Now we're into the second hive and here is where it got very interesting. When I have bees, they have a mind of their own many times. And I could feel that there was something amiss when I picked it up. You just get that feeling when you, you know how heavy a box is. So they took advantage of the weather while it was windy and rainy and I could not get into the box to put the additional brood frames in there and this is what they did. I can feel it and I'm going, okay, I know what's going on. I'm holding really tight to it and sure enough, that's what they did. But that's okay, that's what they do in the wild and so we're just going to let it be. I had to take a little break and I'd already removed the queen box so now I have to hold tight and gather my thoughts and make a plan on how to get them back in the box and keep this new honeycomb. The queen's in there somewhere but I didn't look for her. I thought I'm not going to do it. I like to have my bees be as wild and be them. So I'm just going to let them be. So we're going to scoot that frame over and possibly that one. And my husband's gonna come around and he's gonna guide me in. I'm looking to see where they are. That's it. Those crazy bees. I have carniolan bees and they are actually a very gentle bee. The smoke just helps keep the area calm while there's extra activity going on. All right, here we go. He's on the other side and he's gonna guide me in. I'm sure there were bee casualties, but it cannot be helped. We got it. They're back in business. So we're just gonna tidy things up and straighten it out and walk away. The 
queen excluder helps keep the queen from the honey frame because she's too large to go through the bars. This way she won't lay any brood in the honey that you're going to keep. It will be removed just before winter. This way the queen can move around because they move up into as close to where all the food source is as possible. And this frame is the honey to keep. And that is a moisture barrier. And we're all done. And that's it. I think the most fun I have is playing with a smoker. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Please like and subscribe and share my thrifting and crafting channel with your thrifting and crafting friends. I welcome your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. Check us out on Instagram and tap that notification button for upcoming announcements of thrifts and crafts. But most of all, have a lovely, lovely day.